$240. $240 every year we shell out on Lightroom and Photoshop, all because it's the industry standard. The interesting thing is, is most of us photographers have never tried anything else because we're so ingrained to use Lightroom or Photoshop straight from the get-go. Every tutorial is about Lightroom or Photoshop. Everyone talks about Lightroom and Photoshop. I mean, everything else in this industry has competition, be that camera brands, lens brands, filter brands, the list goes on. But when it comes to software, everyone is just so Adobe, has to be Adobe, nothing else. I thought I'd take this opportunity and edit a photo in every single program. And I mean every single program. I downloaded so many programs. And yes, this video is heavily inspired from Elliot's video who did something similar for graphic design, which is also based on a different video, which is based on game design. Anyway, there's so many similarities and I thought this would be relevant to discuss. Lightroom and Photoshop. Let's start off with everyone's go-to, Lightroom and Photoshop. And yes, I'm doing Lightroom and Photoshop as a combination, just because I think most people would be on the photography plan. Lightroom is an all-in-one editing, organization, and cataloging software, where Photoshop is a raster-based editor. Lightroom has everything you could possibly need for sorting your images, as well as the whole editing suite that you know and love from basic adjustments all the way to calibrations. And recently it's added a lot of AI based tools which make editing your photos a lot quicker. Be that AI masking with subject detection or be that AI denoising which saves you tons of time. Being the industry standard, you'll find a plethora of presets and tutorials, tips and tricks that will help you become a better editor over time. And it performs decent enough. It has all the functions you need, except for the healing tool, which sucks compared to Photoshop. So let's talk about Photoshop. Photoshop is the all-in-one layer-based editor that you know and love. A program that is mentioned by every casual person that you're taking a photo of. Can you Photoshop that for me? And you all know that it's got a, like a million different options in order to style, create, edit your images and be that luminance masking, but in a really powerful way, as opposed to the Lightroom version, there's so many options for pushing your photos further within Photoshop. And I think I speak for most people, the best part of Photoshop is the removal suite. Content aware fill is by far the best thing ever. And generative fill, the new AI beta feature in uh, the beta version of Photoshop is next level. The removal suite in Photoshop is unrivaled. It's just the best thing ever. I won't dwell on these two bits of software. You all know it. You know what it can do. Let's move on. Capture One. Capture One is an all-in-one editing and organizing software. And this is the one I was looking most forward to because this is by far the one that is talked about most often when people are comparing alternatives to Lightroom. I feel like for most people, anything you can do in Lightroom, you can do in Capture One. And it just sounds like the most compelling package. They tailor their raw engine to every camera and every sensor. A, like every raw editing program has to do that to a certain degree, but Capture One takes a lot more time, especially with like Fuji files, which have got a different style sensor. And I mean, it's got every tool that you need to edit professionally, including one of the best color modules I've ever used. You've got your standard HSL adjustments, but then you can fine tune what range of that HSL you can select, as well as specific colors and a skin toning tool where it will selectively pick the skin tones and allow you to modify just the skin tones. This is absolutely awesome. And Lightroom needs this because it's just so powerful what you can do in that color module. And its performance is absolutely stellar. Everything was super responsive and way faster than the Lightroom equivalent. Granted, I am using a powerful machine. I'm using an M1 Max on a 16 inch MacBook, still miles quicker than Lightroom. That being said, it's not all up to snuff in Capture One. The healing tool is by far not as good as Photoshop's equivalent. Um, it's probably on par with Lightroom's version, but though Lightroom's version sucks, and it doesn't include any AI smarts. There's no AI masking. There is masking, you know, the standard way, 
but there's no quick masking with AI or AI denoising or anything like that. So it does fall back in some regards, but the best part about Capture One is their perpetual license. You can buy it once, never have to buy it again. Or you can go on their monthly subscription, but the best thing is that perpetual license as long as they're offering it. Luminar Neo. Luminar Neo is an all-in-one organization and editing program with a heavy, and I mean heavy, emphasis on AI. When you first enter Luminar Neo, it's, it seems like a very basic beginner style editor. You pull up your photo and it will show you presets where it uses AI to detect what's in your image. Oh, it's a seascape. Here's a bunch of seascape presets and it allows you to click through and see what they do to your photos. These suck. I don't know if they're like designed for JPEG files or something, but these, these AI presets are just so overcooked and overbaked. They're like you crank the clarity slider. It's terrible. Do not use them. Yeah. So unless you want your photos looking like pure vomit, use the presets. Anyway, once you get past the presets and you actually get into the editing module, especially the raw editing module, it's actually a really lovely program. Everything's snappy, everything is responsive. It's got all the features you need in terms of basic adjustments, HSL adjustments, though I would like HSL to be able to be sorted by color instead of just by hue, luminance, and saturation. It has some awesome features such as Orton Glow or skin retouching, color harmony, stuff that will make the beginner photographer's job easier like if you don't know what you're doing, it will make it easier to get a good quality result. That being said, if you are already experienced, it makes doing those things really quick. You don't have to jump to Photoshop to do an Orton Glow properly. You can just do it with some sliders and have some decent adjustment in there. The performance was just as good as Lightroom, I'd say, but I feel like editing in Luminar, you can edit heaps of photos really quickly because you just... You have so much power in those different modules. Yes, you still have to do your raw tweaking, but once you get into those more fun modules, ignoring some of the shitty AI replace AI scar replacement and shit. Oh yeah, come on. Ugh. Cause it just looks tacky and dumb. Once you get into some of the generally use useful features, it's actually a pretty great software. Oh. And um, the remove feature also sucks. Um, so you probably still need Photoshop. Sony Imaging Edge. Yeah, you know, the one that comes with your Sony Alpha camera. By default, like this almost should be the best at looking at a Sony RAW file. So let's have a look. So let's download this software. You click download, right? And then you open it up and install it. And then the program does nothing. You cannot do anything in this software from when you first download it. Sony, what the fuck were you thinking? You have to download this software that's just a wrapper that does nothing. Then download another software that is all the modules inside of it. Why? Just make the first download the download. Once you're in, the editing process is actually not that bad. It's kind of a bit clunky, it's a bit old, but the editing, you can do most of everything you want. Some of the labels are a bit odd, like color correction is the tint slider. And instead of like temperature and tint, it's got temperature and color correction. It's got some silly things. I don't know if it's a translation from Japanese or something like that. Once you get your head around it, it's not actually that bad. It's got some of those Sony alpha features that you know from the cameras like dynamic range optimization or like you can go through your color presets like you can have autumn leaves and or whatever the pre-inbuilt baked uh, color profiles are. And like it's all going great and you're going through all the steps and then you get to the very bottom. You get to the last editing menu and you go, wait up. Where is like, where is a HSL? Where is a color module? There is none. 
The only way you could edit colors is by using their baked in preset, like their baked in color profiles. You can't change the hue of the greens or the saturation of the greens or the luminance of the greens. There is no HSL. Why? <laughs> it's just so hamstring, this, this software. Like, for your beginner basic person that's never going to touch color adjustment and they want their photos to look like they've came out of camera with just some, you know, highlights and shadows adjustments, fine. But like, come on, HSL? Like, uh, I'd steer clear. Like, based on the downloading experience and the lack of HSL, it's just like, sin after sin, don't use this program. <clears throat> Darktable. Darktable is a free and open source alternative to Lightroom. Now, when I heard this, I was like, cool, free and open source, you know, there's going to be people adding to it and making it better over time. No, this is a program designed by programmers for programmers. It is, it's terrible. It's a nightmare in there. It suffers severely from designed by a programmer syndrome. It just has so many options and uses terminology you have absolutely never heard of before. Let me just play, let me just quickly play with the perpetual chroma slider. Sorry, the perpetual grading slider. Or how about we reconstruct our highlights using the guided Lapsian method? Yeah, I'm not joking. That it's literally what it, some of the options are. And I get it, in some situations, it's probably the perfect thing if you know what the fuck you're doing. That method might be the perfect thing to save your photo. But Jesus Christ, just like bury it. Bury it in like an advanced menu. Like why does it have to be like right there in your face? Like <laughs> why? It doesn't help its cause that when you're sliding the sliders, it may be different on different pr platforms using Mac. When you slide the sliders, it doesn't actually update the image until you let go of the slider. Like... <laughs> I, I don't know, that just slows you down so much because you, you have to like just a little let go, look at it, just a little let go. It, uh, I don't know. It just doesn't add to its course. That being said, it's not all negative here. Like being designed by programmers and being able to be tweaked by different people, there are some really powerful features. Like the dehaze feature is actually really cool. Works really well. And it's got a distance slider in it that's calculated by spatial depth. It's got some awesome, powerful features. It's just not packaged up very nicely. Like if you made a version of this that was more user-friendly, had normal names with everything advanced hidden away, it may actually work really good. It just could be so much better. And I'm just a bit disappointed by it. Apple Photos. Wait, wait, wait. Hear me out. Apple used to design a pro software called Aperture. They actually used to care about pro photographers, much like they care about their pro audio engineers and their, you know, videographers and that sort of thing. They actually used to care about us photographers too. But then they killed it. And now we are stuck with Apple Photos. And it's actually really great. If you've ever edited a photo on an iPhone, a raw photo that is, it's pretty much exactly the same thing, except it's got a few more features and it's a little bit nicer laid out. It's got everything you need, HSL, tone curves, even like the brilliant slider that you'll find when editing on an iPhone. Granted, no option to remove things from your photos. So there's no spot healing brush or clone stamping tool, anything like that. And it's amazing. It's It's got great performance, everything's there, except it uses the Apple Photo API or whatever, it uses iCloud as its photo library. Which means if you have no iCloud storage left, like mo many of us, <laughs> you can't export your photos. You can't drag them out, you can't export them, you just can't do anything. So it's a really powerful editor, but like, just bring back Aperture, please, please, please. This is not it, this is great for your average person who may take one raw photo in their life, but it's not where it's at. Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo is an award-winning raster-based editor. 
similar to Photoshop. It's basically Photoshop, but made by somebody else. Much like Photoshop, when you open up the image, you get presented into a raw editor first. Once you go through your raw adjustments, you get put into the layer based editor. And the raw based editor is pretty great. You go through everything. And once again, there's no HSL. Why is this so hard? Like it's a basic feature. You need HSL, please HSL. Looking past that and just looking at it as a Photoshop alternative, it's actually really great. Everything is in the exact same place that you'll find in Photoshop. Granted, all the icons are slightly different, but everything you need, everything I tried at least, be that Auden Glow, skin retouching, dodge and burn, masking, all that stuff is all there and it works really great. This is by far the best Photoshop alternative I've tried so far and it works really great. I just wouldn't use it as a raw based editor, but let's be real, not many people are using only Photoshop as their raw based editor. Uh, the biggest letdown I could find was the removal tools. It doesn't have anything like content aware fill. It doesn't have the same content aware like spot healing brush. It's just not as good. It just um, it's just not as good at removing things, you know, with smarts. Like obviously you can clone stamp stuff if you take your time, but it's just, it's a lot slower because it doesn't have those smarts that lets you do it really quickly. And it doesn't have the AI masking features, which is a letdown, but as a base non AI Photoshop alternative, it's really good. Well worth a try if you're not constantly using those features. Oh, while we're here, every single one of these programs that I'm talking about today did not have any credit card requirement for downloading their trial. So if any of these catch your eye, give it a try because there's no barrier of entry. Photomator. Wow, wow, wow. This, this, okay, I should clarify first. This program is only available on Apple products. So iPhone, iPad, and Mac. And the Mac version only came out like a few months ago. On the surface, it looks exactly like Apple Photos did. It uses the same iCloud-based photo library. Like they're, they're really pandered to Apple and the Apple ecosystem here. Then you get to the editing features and it's got absolutely everything you need, you know, tone curves, HSL, the list goes on. And then you delve a little bit deeper and then you realize this is the most one-to-one -one Lightroom program there is out there. It's got AI masking. It's got super resolution. And you just, yeah, you're having a blast editing through this, you know, super well designed, super smooth user interface. Like everything's smooth. Like it's way faster Lightroom. I'll put it out there, way faster. Um, be that them utilizing the neural cores or whatever in the MacBooks. Anyway, it's an absolute breeze. And then you get to the same point as Apple Photos where you go to export a photo. And because you're out of iCloud storage, because who has iCloud storage? You, you can't export your image. And I was super bummed. But then I looked at the roadmap, which hallelujah, the roadmap it wants, this, this program wants to be the Lightroom competitor. Gonna come out with full library support with rating and like all the same organizational features. It's gonna get, you know, luminance masks and dehazing and it's gonna get selective face editing with AI. Just, it looks so, it, this program has so much potential and is something I'm gonna keep my eye out on just because it, it feels so powerful for such an early version of the software. Raw Therapy. Raw Therapy is a free and open source competitor to Lightroom. It is marketed to those with low end machines that don't have as much power to push big images. And once again, it's the paradigm of built by a programmer. So yes, it absolutely lives up to his name. You need therapy after using this program. Please do not use this program. Also, this program adds like a tone curve to your image straight off the bat. I don't know if that's like part of their raw conversion or something, but why? <laughs> why? It's got no HSL and every option is unnecessarily complex. Please, 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 please don't use this program. Photopea. Photopea is a free ad supported online version of Photoshop. When I heard that, I thought 
this is terrible. I'm going to add this in as a joke. And then I tried it and it was actually really good. The raw editor on it is a joke. I, uh, whatever. But the actual Photoshop version, like once you get into the layer base editor, is actually super like powerful. It felt exactly like Photoshop and it looked exactly like Photoshop, but in a browser. And it had like content aware features with its removal and stuff. It actually was really good at removing things. I'm definitely going to use this in the future. Like if I'm in a pinch and I'm not at my computer or I'm at a computer that doesn't have Photoshop, I'm using this program. Like I haven't, I probably should read like the privacy policy or whatever to see, to make sure that they can't like use your images once you upload it to it. I uploaded a shitty photo. I don't care about it anyway, but it's so powerful. I, I'm shocked. It had everything. Like I could do an Orton glow. I could remove really good. I could dodge and burn masking. Like how, how does this exist? And how is it better than the free and open source ones? Yeah, and you, you feel just at home here. Like, Affinity Photo, I felt at home, but like, every icon was slightly different, so like, it took a while to adjust. This looks 100% identical. I don't know how they haven't been sued yet. I know Photoshop themselves is going to have a web version in the future. If it's as good and as responsive as this one is, why not have it in the web? PSA, be careful where you upload your images to. Make sure you're reading, like, if they can use it, like, if they get a license because you upload their image. And this, in a pinch, awesome. DxO Labs. Yeah, you know, that, that company that everyone couldn't shut the fuck up that, Oh, my phone had the best score on DxO Mark. <sighs> like, and then you look at the photos and they're shit anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, and well, this company makes a editing program, go figure. It's, it's a really good editor. It had decent performance, it had everything you needed. The color editor was awesome, very similar to like Capture One. It just didn't woo me at all, this program. I don't know why. I think a lot of the benefits of this program are like it's really awesome lens corrections because like every time you imported a photo with a different lens you had to download that lens profile from the internet it was great it had all the technical aspects i think their noise correction feature is one of the best um bar ai features and their, their removal tool was really great i don't know why like on paper this software was actually really good but i just couldn't get around it i just I don't know. I wasn't excited by it. On One. On One is an all-in-one editing program with a heavy emphasis on AI. I think this was one of the most heavy programs I downloaded in terms of file size. It was one of the biggest. It's It felt to me like a Luminar competitor. Like it had all those AI presets and it has, you know, the sky replacements and like a weather feature which like you can add snow and stuff, looked dog shit. Uh, anyway, it felt like a Luminar competitor. It was, it was pretty responsive. Like every adjustment worked fine. It took me a while to find out that there was a filters section where you can get like tone curves and Alden glows and all that sort of stuff. It felt like Luminar, but less polished. It, it worked just fine. Like all the sliders worked. It just, I don't know. It felt, it felt hard to find things in this program. Like it took a, it took me a while to find a tone curve. Like I was looking and looking and if you get used to it, it's probably fine. It just felt like a worse version of Luminar to me. To take home here, I, you probably would have noticed every photo I edited in these programs. I tried to edit a few in every program, but at the end, I was just editing the same photo. But if you look at the edits in all these programs, they're mostly, they mostly look the same. Like you could use as much as I rag on about like raw therapy, making you need therapy. Like if you edit your photos in any of these programs, they're probably going to look good if you know what you're doing and you take your time and you learn the software you can get some good results regardless of the software. So I really encourage you guys, 
if you're paying for Lightroom and you're thinking about, you know, stepping away or seeing what else is out there, download a free trial. At the end of the day, you can get some really good looking results. Granted, it may be a little bit harder in some aspects. Point is, try something else. There's some really good programs out there that I will be keeping my eye out over the next coming months and years to see if they're worth switching to. Anyway, if you like making your life easier, check out my last video. It's on the most convenient camera accessory that makes taking photos with filters a million times better. Go check it out. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next one.